Um, so every day we produce massive amounts of digital data um, through our um, browsing history, uh, transaction records, GPS location, cell phones, sensors, and all this um, big data analytics has disrupted large sectors of the economy and it's making the fortune of Silicon Valley companies. Um, and here in San Francisco, we're the heart of this big data revolution. Um, we have the greatest, hot, uh, the greatest tech talent on earth um, working to make our lives a little better. And they're helping us uh, make new professional connections, um, figure out what books we might like to read and what's the most efficient way to avoid Friday traffic on, on the Bay Bridge. And this is all great and it's making our lives slightly more comfortable. But is this really all we can do with this great technology? Is, it, is there a way we could use data science um, to actually create social impact? Um, so first of all, wh what is data science really? Um, it's this new field at the intersection of math and statistics, uh, computer science and domain expertise or operational research. And it, it, it's really about three things. Um, knowing how to ask the right questions to the data, to these new amounts and types of data we're generating, uh, using statistical methods to answer those questions, and then software engineering to implement a solution and build data products that um, are actually going to be usable by others. Um, so in the private sector, businesses have invested millions of dollars in these techniques to figure out, to, to know their customers better and predict their tastes and, and preferences and, and design solutions that match those needs. Um, and the question is really, could we use these same techniques, but instead of predicting our likelihood to buy stuff, could we use them to um, identify people who might have a high risk of health complication? Uh, you know, could we use the algorithms that Uber has, but to optimize ambulance dispatching and reduce wait time? Um, could, could we do what banks and insurances are doing to build your risk score, but instead of that, predict um, who might be, what are the people who might be at risk of being stuck in poverty traps? Um, and, and the thing is, if, if we uh, invested as much in knowing the, the, beneficiaries of so, the, 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 the beneficiaries of social programs as um, de uh, uh, marketing departments do in knowing their customers, we could, we could know how individual might respond to specific uh, social interventions. And we could um, design, uh, we, we could match them to the most effective social programs and we could tailor social programs so that they're overall much more performant and we, and we could you know, increase dram performance dramatically and reduce operational costs. And so, the, and so we know that all of this is possible with data science. Um, so the question is, what, what does it really take to do data science for social impact? Um, so there's some, um, some of the tech uh, enthusiasts or utopians out there who think all it really takes is just a bunch of um, smart data scientists who can hack the social sector. Um, and famous investor Mark Andreessen has this quote about um, how software is eating the world. And so just like it's, it's overturned large traps of the economy, you know, it might just take over the social sector to rationalize and optimize it. And then you have the, the, the skeptics or realists, depending on where you stand, that think that, well, eradicating world's poverty and hunger might just be a tiny bit more complex than this. And mission-driven organizations exist in the first place to correct some of these systemic inequalities and, and, and correct market flaws. And so there's no reason to think that just releasing the technology out there will solve any of this. And I have to say, I, I was a bit of a skeptic myself. I worked for several years at the front lines of development and uh, working with poor farmers um, in Colombia who had been displaced by the, by the war, I saw firsthand how the state was unable to deliver on its promise to return the land to these people, not because there was a lack of political will, but because they had no idea who owned what and um, collecting the data and processing those claims just took forever and, and ultimately failed. And if there's something that um, code is really powerful at is automating things on a large scale. And that's when it clicked for me that sometimes uh, when the conditions are aligned, technology can really be this instrument that carries um, policy and, and research and good intentions towards creating tangible social good. Um, 
And that's what I came to look for in Silicon Valley. And I now have an office with ping pong tables, and I use the word disrupt in my presentations. Um, so on one hand, you have those guys, the technologists, um, who can build really powerful stuff really quickly, but they don't necessarily know what for. And then the development and the policy people uh, who, know really, who know a lot about the problems we're facing, but they have no idea what we can, what we can do with data science. And so bridging the two takes time and effort. And that's why we created Bayes Impact. Uh, we're a nonprofit that builds data science solutions for the social sector. And we invest heavily in finding the, the, the most pressing social issues that also have the highest opportunity for technological leverage. And we build open source, data-driven software that help governments and nonprofits optimize what they do in the long run. Essentially, we're working on bringing the latest data science technology from Silicon Valley to the places it hasn't gotten to. And one area that we think, uh, where we think data science can be really impactful is agriculture. Um, GDP growth from agriculture is twice as likely to reduce poverty as any other sector in the economy. And um, agricultural productivity is important because uh, the global demand for food is expected to double by 2050. So essentially, improving agricultural efficiency is a question of uh, poverty reduction, but also uh, food security and, and building a sustainable food system. Uh, so this is uh, Don Andres. Uh, he's a rice grower from the Tolima region in Colombia. And um, over the past few years, uh, his average uh, crop yield has declined from um, six tons per hectare to five tons per hectare due to high climate variability. And agronomic processes are really complex. Um, crop development is influenced by countless interrelated variables and increasing climate variability is just making this even more complicated. And so for Don Andres to adapt to these conditions sometimes feel like a bit of a, a stab in the dark. But imagine if we could use um, machine learning techniques that um, identify patterns in the data and learn from historical cases to help Andres know what are the optimal steps that he could take to optimize his, his crop cycle. What if he could know um, what's, the, what's the seed variety most suitable for his field? And what's the planting date with the highest expected return this season? Or what if he could know um, how to stop or how to prevent the, the spread of a disease before it even reaches his field. All of this we can do with data science, and that's, that's why we're building a, a decision support tool um, that collects data in real time and uses predictive analytics on soil data and climate data and, and, and harvest data um, to give Andres and smallholder farmers personalized recommendations on how they can optimize the, the entire agricultural cycle. And it looks something like this. Um, they can receive uh, real-time information about you know, top uh, crop and seed variety for their specific uh, field and agroclimatic conditions, um, when information about when they should start irrigating, how much fertilizer, fertilizer they should use. Um, and uh, the pilot test that we're running in Colombia show that we can get up to a 20% increase in productivity. So of course, all the, all the big corporations like Monsanto and John Deere uh, are racing into this analytics business. And um, they have huge conflicts of interest. I mean, they're, they're the same companies selling the seeds and the equipment. Uh, and farmers are concerned about the fact that having so much data might enable them to tweak the market in a particular way. So that's why we're, we're building an independent platform um, accessible and affordable to smallholder farmers in the developing world. Um, and, and this is something that could be super powerful to um, reduce the yield gap and equalize um, the, the, the effects of um, technology. So there's a few, there's a few, there's a few uh, aspects why I think this could be really powerful. Uh, one is that it's, uh, it shows how data can be tied to decision making in a very direct way. So, we're not just collecting data to write a report that's going to sit on someone's desk here. We're putting it to use in a very tangible way. Uh, and that's why at Bayes we focus on building decision support tools um, that can bridge the gap between um, data collection and action. And with the rise of inexpensive uh, smartphones out there, you can get, now get a phone for um, $40, and, and this next 
billion people that's going to come online in the next five years, there's huge opportunities to drive behaviors, not just at the caseworker level, but all the way to the end user. Another, um, another reason uh, why this is powerful is that it, it, auto, it, it automates the, the, the data collection process. So instead of having to send surveyors to the ground, we're now generating data directly by the users using the product. And so it, it's a much cheaper and more reliable way to generate data. And this data we can now hand over to the state. So ministries of agriculture can have a, 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 an idea in near real time of what's going on in the agriculture sector. And they can use this to um, refine their policy process and, and calibrate their, their agricultural subsidies, for example. And finally, uh, it's open source. Um, wh what does it mean to be open source? Well, first of all, it means that it's, it's open. Uh, there's no gatekeeper. There's no one channel for progress. So any community can uh, use and modify the source code and adapt it to their particular needs. It also means that uh, not having proprietary software avoids being locked in with just one vendor, so you can change solutions as you wish. And it also means that it, it opens the door to having a nonprofit organization or a public entity managing or owning this data and setting all the right regulations so that um, the data is not excessively privatized and we can make sure agricultural data is being put to good use. So uh, I want to end look, taking a look at this picture, at this uh, cover on big data from The Economist. And the reason I like it is because it's pretty clear how um, challenging it can be for the human mind to make sense of the multitude of signal and the data that we're generating. But, but it also shows that ultimately um, there's a human being here holding the tool that turns data into insights. And he's holding it and transforming it into fertilizer to grow this really nice plant and not um, feed a, a dragon, for example. So instead of, letting, um, instead of letting software and technology eat the world, I think we can shape it uh, to help us feed the world for the better. Thank you. <laughs>